My name is Susan Helberg, and I am the CEO of Moms Theatre. Moms Theatre is also the talk I'm going to do. Affected me the most, I think. Um, it's been my workplace for 12 years. And Moms Theatre is a theatre that is based on actors with intellectual disability or learning disability. And it is an integrated theater in the sense that we work in most productions with actors without a disability ish. Uh, we uh, do around two and a half shows a year, new productions. We tour. We uh, do 60 to 70 shows in our own theater in Malmo. And we've been around for 30 years. Moms Theater is indeed a unique theater in many ways, in the way I see it. But the main objective is that we are a theater that has a full time employed ensemble of actors with learning disability. And so it has been since, two th since 2005. We have six actors. These six, five of them are employed. One is in an internship that will lead to an employment in about a year. And these six actors carry an organization of 16 to 17 people. I've uh, been talking about disability, learning, and I'll give you a short definition just so that you know, and then I'll read. Intellectual disability. A disability characterized by limitations in intellectual functioning. That means reasoning, learning, and problem solving. And in the adaptive behavior which covers a range of everyday social and practical skills. And then we have learning disability, a neurological disorder. In simple terms, a learning disability that results from a difference in ways in how a person's brain is wired. For instance, if you are, have a diagnosis within the autism spectrum, My years, my 12 years as Moms Theatern has meant a lot and has learned an open doors to me as to the challenges for people with a learning disability. To understand the fights they have to face to at least get a reasonable amount of self-empowerment, control of their own life and how to take part in the society out of the social care system. If you have a learning disability, the standard scenario would be that you go to a special school, you live in a special housing, and the activities you do are normally with groups, with other peoples, people with learning disability. And if you're not lucky enough to have a family with whom you have a good relationship, there are very few places where you will have the possibility to meet and interact with people without a disability. In fact, for many, the only daily contact they have with people without a disability are people that are paid to be around you. So the scenario, you go to a special school, the school ends, and what happens? The truth is that more or less you go into a pension system. So you become retired a few years after 20. And the normal way is that you maintain in retirement for the rest of your life. You are provided for, you have 
your housing taken care of, you get food, you have daily activities so that you can get through the day. But you have very little possibilities to influence your own life. You cannot decide on even the most simple things. You cannot decide that you want to buy a bird for your apartment because that has to go through a long um, line of decisions before that can be decided and probably you won't in the end. And al also the fact that since you are retired you receive a pension and that pension is only enough just to make ends meet. So you won't be able probably to travel and if you travel, you will be traveling with a group of people with learning disabilities to a place that you might not have chosen yourself. Yes, with a learning disability, you are a part of society, of course. But honestly, you are not having an active part in society. And you're not having an opportunity in society and certainly you don't have the opportunity to contribute in society and to society and you're excluded in most cases for uh, of the possibility to have your own life to support yourself and to make decisions that are vital for your life with our actors Talking to our six actors and guest actors, you understand that it is so important to have a job, to have a salary, to know that you are a part and you're delivering something into society. Society needs you. And not only is it money, and not only is it something to do, but it's also not to be forced to live on subsidies, but to support yourself, not as a right, but a possibility to support yourself, a possibility to have a job. So, the key to many is to have a job. And working at a theatre, as our actors do, is a double job in the sense that it's a job, it gives you money, but the whole point of your job is to show your job to the world. So that's really power. In 2008, we finally became our own little institution. We are now financed by the region, by the state, and by the municipality. It has been a struggle to get there, but we did. And now my colleague will start to talk a little bit more about our theatre work. Hi, so my name is uh, Per Turnquist and I work as the artistic director in Momsteatern here in Malmö. As Suzanne said, some of our colleagues are actors with learning disabilities, not disabled people playing theater. It's a difference, isn't it? It's a difference between an actor with learning disability and a learning disabled person playing theater. Our colleagues our actors, as their first identity when on stage and when in work, professional actors with university studies and a lot of working years on their CVs. I believe that a person with learning disabilities is often identified uh, by the disability and nothing else. And that starts processes between the, which we used to say, statistically normal person 
That process often maybe, maybe automatically makes the person react as a caretaker, a person that just wants to help, even when help is not asked for. Or a gatekeeper who just wants to protect the person from self-made dangerous situations and high expectations. Or simply as just a superior person. I have colleagues, we have colleagues in their 40s that are still treated as teenagers. So we believe in every person's right to identify oneself. We believe in every actor's right to stand on stage as senders in front of a crowd, the receivers, telling stories that necessary isn't their own. That is why we are not performing a theater telling dis disability stories. We're performing Shakespeare, Victor Hugo, Stephen King. Because when you put a person with a learned disability in, for example, a theater environment, and set the ambition as high as possible, even a little bit higher than actually is possible, Something very interesting happens. When you work with respect and demands, then something interesting happens. The person goes from disabled into abled. If you change the surroundings, searching for equal adaptation, not particularly low in the expectations, something fantastic happens. Potential arising, talent is being spotted, self-confidence and empowerment is experienced. And that is art, isn't it? That's democracy. It is also a person's right to fail. In my experience in meetings with the people around the person with learning disability, could be parents, relatives, teachers, staff, and so on, is that the ambition is very, very, very low. So failure is not, is not an option, but in fact something scary for the others. I believe that failures is the start towards the real success in a person's life. We like to perform for children. We have, we have done so for many years. We have no problems with the kids, but uh, the teachers. Hmm. I remember one time we played a show and the doors to the theater opened and hundreds of children stormed in, excited to see the room, the dim lights, you know. And it was an audience from different schools, so there was a lot of teachers trying to control them. And I heard one teacher yell, trying to reach over the, the children's excited voices. I heard her scream, now we are at the theater. You have to be quiet. And remember what I said before, don't stare. The teacher had probably, maybe in her own concern of our actors, told her class that they were going to see theater with strange people on stage. The children, of course, they don't care about these things. They want the story, they want the experience from us. They might comment that the giraffe in our show Jungle Book had running shoes on, not that he was played by an actor with Down syndrome. What I, as an artistic director, interested in to investigate is what I call the third dimension. I believe that my colleagues, the actor, has one more dimension than every other, any other actor in the whole world. The third dimension. When you go to a theater venue, you might go because it's an interesting story. Hamlet, for example, that's an interesting story. And then you can go because it's a famous actor playing Hamlet, uh, Benedict Cumberbatch. It's, he's a famous actor playing Hamlet. But I believe that our actors have something that even Benedict Cumberbatch doesn't have, hasn't got, and that is the person behind the role. Who is behind the character? Who is telling the story? The person behind the character, the actor, in fact, plays the story within the story. So I would like to end this um, by giving you some thoughts. Isn't it time for you to have a real look at your own disabilities? Hmm? You might say, well, I don't have any disabilities. No, no, I don't. But I'm talking about the social disability. Try to see, try to be interested in the person behind the, their disability. No one is their disability. That would be a complete waste of good and exam exciting personalities. Hmm? I'm talking about the democratic disability. How can you create space 
for marginalized people to grow into? And could you, while doing that, try to be aware if you're falling into a caretaker or a gatekeeper role? What can you do to make sure that a person with learning disabilities access information, social, political, cultural, and so on? I would like you to look at your own limitations regarding your attitude towards people with learning disabilities. Isn't it so that a person with power that limits itself, oneself, will certainly limit a power, a person without power? Thank you. Yeah. Just to round up, um, we started a school two years ago, uh, 2010, <laughs> and we thought that would mean a challenge for the actors to learn the new profession, to learn the techniques, but we realized the big problem was learning what a job is and what it means to work, and that was the big uh, issue. And we understood that nobody in their world had ever thought the thought that they would, in fact, have a job. They would not have the possibility of working and having a career. Denying people that possibility. And many people said, well, you shouldn't challenge them, challenge them, because, you know, it's difficult. But what happens with a person that don't get any challenges? Challenges, You won't overcome problems. You won't succeed, like Pear said. And you won't learn new things. And you won't prosper. And you won't grow. How can you deny anyone that? Because that is what you're doing. So our actors has gone from being receivers to being senders. And from us, that doesn't have a learning disability. Like Pear said, like other speakers said, we have to start by seeing. We must see, we must want to see the individual. We must look for what people can do instead of focusing on what people cannot do. I wish I could have had one of my actors with us here today, but unfortunately, or fortunately, they are working and they're giving a show tonight. So, I thank you. Thank you for listening. I see you.